so glad to be in Tulsa. This is such a great city. There's things you'll find in this city that you won't find anywhere else, like the Sherwin Miller Museum of Jewish Art. It's really a treasure chest of Jewish history right here in the heart of Middle America. Let's go meet with Arthur Feldman, who's the uh, executive director right now. So Arthur, tell us a little bit more about the Sherwin Miller Museum of Jewish Art. The museum began uh, as a congregational collection, and when the congregation sort of redid its spaces, mm -hmm. it gave an opportunity for the museum to move to this location. Mm -hmm. And we've been in existence since 1966, and in this location since 2003. Tell us a little bit about uh, Mr. Miller's purpose and vision in, in putting this hall together. Mr. Miller was one of the uh, directors actually was the Fenster family that were the collectors mm -hmm. and everyone sort of worked symbiotically it was a small community and the idea was to present Jewish art and culture as well as the story of the horror of World War II, the Holocaust in mm -hmm. one location. Mm -hmm. And Arthur you mentioned that uh, uh, really you don't have to be Jewish to love what this museum has to offer to the community it's, it's much more of a bigger picture to, to kind of show the common ground that we all have together. And that's really it in, a, in the way in which we try to work the museum, that you don't have to be Jewish to enjoy what's happening here. We are the 24-7 for archaeology. We have programs on art and culture, as well as the program, the Kaiser mm -hmm. uh, Hall of uh, the Holocaust. Arthur, when we drove in the property, I saw a sign for the Jewish graphic novel, which is the current exhibit that you've got here. Uh, really kind of took me by surprise. I don't know what that is. What is a Jewish graphic novel? We try to do a variety so that people don't view us as grandma or grandpa's attic. Mm -hmm. So we do shows on contemporary art, things of contemporary interest. The graphic novel is probably the fastest, most read book in libraries worldwide. And we're talking about com comic books, kind of? I, I think they're adult comic books. I think yeah. it's beyond the classic comic book. And. Uh, one of the interesting things for us, the inventors of Superman were two Jewish boys out of Cleveland. Hmm. And the whole world mushroomed uh, yeah. around that. Yeah, and so the graphic novel then really finds its, its roots in, in Jewish creativity. In Jewish creativity and Jewish values. All mm -hmm. of the things, you know, you thought truth, justice, the American way, all about Superman. Yeah. All of the positive values are in all the superheroes. Yeah. Uh, Captain Marvel, yeah. Batman. Uh, so all of these values are in the superheroes. And even the Incredible Hulk is based on a, a Jewish mythological creature, isn't that right? It's called the Golem. The Golem mm -hmm. went both good and bad, and mm -hmm. he was uh, sort of like the uh, Hulk. Like the Hulk, or the little Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of Correct. thing. Correct. And Arthur, one of the most moving things that, that I've seen here today is the Kaiser Holocaust exhibition. Uh, and the panel there, with, which showed uh, some of the anti-Semitic uh, values of, of Henry Ford, one thing that, that really took my heart was that uh, during this time in world history, it wasn't just a problem in Nazi Germany, this anti-Semitism. Hitler didn't operate in a vacuum. He had absolute control in Germany, but he had supporters all over the world. And uh, America was one of those countries. And uh, we were able to show historically here through the several panels how this began. Mm -hmm. We also have a very poignant uh, Thing that's Tulsa related, the worst race riot in the history of the United States took place here in 21. Mm. And here, it's almost 17 years later, you have the Kristallnacht and the pogroms against the Jews in Europe. Mm -hmm. So we try to make the parallels of what happened locally and what happened on a world scene. Mm. And on the kind of the flip side, on the much more on the really positive side, there's a tie between the Oklahoma, was it 45th Infantry Division uh, in, in World War II as Absolutely. well? And, and uh, the the number of Jewish Americans that served uh, during the war. Well, for sure there were a lot of Jewish Americans who served in the war, but the 45th was an Oklahoma division, and we have original letters. These were young boys who not only saw their friends die in battle, but mm -hmm. after all the horrors of war, were liberators of the camp at Dachau. And we have original letters where they wrote back to their mothers and fathers, mm -hmm. so it counteracts revisionist history. They were eyewitnesses, and it's a very local thing to come from rural America, go to Europe, fight, and then just see the horrors of what real war was yeah. about. Uh, in, our, in our last moment together, uh, the museum and, and really the purpose and the intention of, of all that you're doing here is really a celebration of life. And uh, we see that even just coming on the property, just the, the, the activity that, that's, that's taking place here. I think here. that's real important. I, I always say that uh, 
I'm looking for bonds of commonality. We are 24-7 archaeology, we are 24-7 Bible. There's a great deal that we have in common where we are rooted with the greater community theologically. And we're here to show that and at the same time to demystify what Jews and Judaism is all about.